We've now learned that your blood transports oxygen, but your blood transports other products throughout your body too. Things like nutrients, hormones, and proteins. Hormones that signal a variety of processes, food, proteins, not to mention our defense system. Those all important white cells, and speaking of defense against disease, there are a few diseases that are transmitted through the blood and some that attack the blood. Let's talk to the scientists working in the areas of blood research to learn more. Basically, when we discuss leukemia, what we're talking about is that the bone marrow, which makes all of the blood cells, makes too many white cells. And if you have too many cells, uh, you suffer adverse consequences from that, which may even include death. Now, one of the major, major advances in medical science called bone marrow transplantation, where a donor donates their bone marrow that's transfused into a patient and rescues them because in order to get rid of their leukemia, they have to give them either radiation and high-dose chemotherapy, and chemotherapy is drugs, which basically destroy those white cells. When a patient receives a bone marrow transplant, during the time period when their own marrow is destroyed and the new marrow starts to grow and produce cells, we have to transfuse probably seven to eight units of red cells and probably somewhere around uh, 15 to 20 separate transfusions of platelets in order to support the patient in that time period. Sickle cell is a genetically inherited disease in which the red cells are not shaped in a round form like they're supposed to be. They become moon-shaped, crescent moon-shaped. They come, become curled and they clog up. Many programs also try to collect blood for sickle cell patients from the same ethnic group as the patients. Uh, so many programs will attempt to increase recruitment of, of black donors or Hispanic donors in part so that the blood from those ethnic groups which are most compatible with the same types of patients can be targeted to those patients. And these programs have demonstrated reduced rates of, of transfusion reactions. Hemophilia is a bleeding tendency that is inherited and most often by males. It causes the patients basically to have a pro prolonged bleeding from sites of injury or sometimes even spontaneously. It's more of a slow oozing process that can be in the deep muscles or in the joints or internal organs and uh, not so much superficially in the skin because that's taken care of small cuts and nicks by the blood platelets. It's treated with a concentrate of either factor eight or factor nine, the two plasma proteins that are deficient in the common types of hemophilia. And these raise the levels of those factors to where clots can occur. But the hope is that within the next five or 10 years at least that the gene therapy will be a reality for patients, particularly with the more severe forms of hemophilia. Blood research is critically dependent on advances in, in technology. Uh, we use the most modern molecular biology methods to, to study viruses, to build new tests, to try to develop new recombinant DNA types of blood components, uh, very active in, in interacting with biotechnology companies. The coming together of technology, both in terms of uh, computer technology as well as major discoveries that have been found in the laboratories with nucleic acid testing, new, new testing techniques, new ways of uh, preserving blood. There's more happening now than, than has happened for 50 years. We test the blood today for 10 different infectious agents. The, they they kind of group into the, the major viruses, and there we have the AIDS virus, HIV, a related virus that causes leukemia that's called the human T leukemia virus, HTLV. We test for several hepatitis viruses, hepatitis B and hepatitis C. For the first time, patients were dying after getting West Nile from blood transfusion. This led to a major focused research effort to 
uh, develop and implement West Nile screening. His discovery was that if we had a test that we could screen blood donors, that the blood donors themselves were able to uh, help us identify when infections were present in a particular population anywhere in the United States. And that effort uh, paid off this year by the identification not only of almost a thousand blood donors who had been bitten by mosquitoes, had the West Nile virus, didn't know it because they weren't ill, because most people will not be ill by this virus, but uh, it protected patients who might be transfused with the virus uh, who would be much more susceptible to, to true infection. These tests uh, and the other safety measures have reduced the risk for the major viruses, the hepatitis and HIV virus, to less than one per million. Since the early 1900s, we've come a long way. We've learned how to preserve and transport blood, allowing us to set up blood centers and safely store donated blood. We've learned how to use and separate platelets and other blood components from plasma. And we've learned how to test blood to make sure it is safe from transmittable diseases. We use blood transfusions to treat diseases such as sickle cell anemia and cancer. We use blood in heart surgery, organ transplants, and bone marrow transplants. We use blood to treat injuries from all types of accidents. We've come a long way. People live now with different kinds of cancers and with treatment events and even get cured by the unique surgeries that are done early on because they're detected early. And that is because of research. Blood banks have uh, become involved in lots of other activities relative to the medical community. Not only do we provide blood and blood components to help physicians uh, save lives, but we are also doing more things now. We have specialized laboratories who solve problems relative to diagnosis. We uh, provide support to organ transplant programs through matching of, uh, the organ donors with organ recipients. And in some blood centers now, they also have tissue programs where they provide bone and skin and other kinds of tissues for treatment of uh, trauma patients and other kinds of medical uh, activities. One of the uh, really exciting parts of the blood center is the research programs that go on here. And one of those research programs is dedicated to trying to improve uh, the care and management of patients who have platelet disorders of various kinds. In the future, we're anticipating that blood banks will play a major role in the delivery of gene therapy and other kinds of what we call cellular therapies, uh, cancer vaccines, uh, vaccines for patients who may already be infected with HIV or hepatitis that are able to help eliminate those infections by infusing into those patients uh, uh, another person's cells that have been primed to kill off infected cells. With science, you can go into the laboratory and make discoveries that can really change people's lives. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, a, it's never a dull moment. Uh, you know, always we have to be attentive to the latest news to the latest scientific findings, to the latest opportunities to put together some new testing method. Often you can make an incredible difference uh, as one person if you're involved in science uh, versus a lot of other careers or activities that you might be interested in. Not only is a field where you feel like you're doing something that's contributing, but it's also a field that is, is growing and the, the resources, the financial and uh, and career opportunities in, in science and in biomedical research are, are substantial. What we're learning about blood saves hundreds of thousands of lives each year. To learn more about blood research and careers in science, visit mybloodyourblood.org. You too could be part of this life-saving work.